Good morning, everyone. My name is Miss Bridget, and thank you for joining me for a very special uh, outreach story time for your classroom. I'm so excited to be here with you today. We're gonna be reading some fun books about winter and snow today. So let's warm our hands up to sing our hello song. Hello, we're gonna use a new sign today. Hello, snow. So if you hold both your hands up like this and just twinkle them and bring them down like that, that is snow. Let's try it again, here we go. Snow. All right, here we go on the count of three. One, two, three. Hello, snow. Hello, snow. Hello, snow. It's time to say hello, snow. Can we warm them up and go a little bit faster? Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Hello, snow. Hello, snow. Hello, snow. It's time to say hello, snow. Well, now that I've said hello to you and you've said hello to me, how about we get started with a story? Today we are reading When Winter Comes, Discovering Wildlife in Our Snowy Woods by Amy M. Bissonnette. And I would like to thank Little Bigfoot for their permission to read this book to you today. When Winter Comes. When Winter Comes. And ice forms, cold and smooth on the lakes, thick enough for us to skate on. Some people think our woods are empty, but we know better. We know the fallen log we duck behind as we toss snowballs back and forth. is a sub-zero shelter for tree frogs, caterpillars, snails, slugs, and hibernating mosquitoes, and ladybugs. Can you see them all in there? In the log? We know the windswept drifts of snow across covered tangles of tunnels below the snow. <gasps> they could be full of little mice or other burrowing animals. Made by meadow mice in search of seeds and bark and hiding places after dark when the owls hunt. We know the frozen lake where we come to fish hosts a slushy slumber party of sleepily swimming rainbow trout. And turtles who once sun themselves on the water's edge lie buried at the lake's bottom gooey muck. We know the towering trees we ski among shield hardy birds from bitter winds. You see all the birds? Chickadees, juncos, nuthatches, and jays. Birds who flock to our feeders back and forth all day and cluster on branches at night, feathers plumped up against the wind. Winter comes to our woods. We know the animals who sleep the winter away. The ones who hunt, like foxes and mountain lions. The ones who are prey, like deer and bunnies. And underground, look, more animals. The ones who leave wandering tracks in the snow and the ones who howl to the crisp, clear stars at night. We grab our sleds and race downhill, scarves flying, icy wind in our faces. We know we share this wild and wonderful wintry world. Because the woods are not empty, they are very much alive. And we feel very much alive when winter comes. And that is the end of When Winter Comes.
Today our rhyme is the five little snowmen. So I thought I would bring Olaf to join me today. The five little snowmen. Five little snowmen sitting on a hill. The first one said, I think I feel a chill. The second one said, but look, here comes the sun. And the third one said, we better run and run and run. The fourth one said, he doesn't scare me. And the fifth one said, I'm melting, oh gee. Then up came the sun shining bright all day and down went the snowmen. They just melted away. The five little snowmen. Our next story today is the classic, The Mitten, adapted and illustrated by Jane Brett. And I would like to thank J.P. Putnam and Sons for their permission to read it to you today. Now, this is a story that I remember listening to when I was your age, so I hope you like it just as much as I do. Once there was a boy named Nicky who wanted a new mittens made from wool as white as snow. And if you look here, you can see his grandmother. She's making the yarn and winding it into a ball to make him mittens. At first, his grandmother, Baba, did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll never find it. But Nikki wanted snow white mittens and finally Baba made them. After she finished, she said, when you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and sound, but then I will look to see if you still have your snow white mittens. So off Nikki went. And it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped to the snow and was left behind. A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside. It was cozy and warm and just the right size. So he decided to stay. And look, off Nikki went with just one mitten. Snowshoe Rabbit came hopping along. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. It was then he saw the mitten and he wriggled in feet first. The mole didn't think there was room for both of them, but when he saw the bit rabbit's big kickers, he moved over. Next, a hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue with someone covered with prickles, they made room. And there's Nikki looking into a tree and an owl friend. As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl attracted by the commotion swooped down. When he decided to move in also, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog jumbled. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they quickly let him in. Up through the snow appeared a badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left, but when they saw his diggers, they gave him the thumb. It started snowing and the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air and a fox trotting by stopped to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave the fox lots of room. A giant bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. The animals were packed as tightly as could be but what animal would argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged too many times its size, but Baba's good knitting held fast. Oh, look, there's a little mouse. 
Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled into one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the bear's nose. Oh, and look, I think Nikki's just realized he's missing his mitten. The bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Ah, choo! Oh, the force of the sneeze shot the mitten into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. Oh, and there's Nikki looking for his mitten. On his way home, Nikki saw a white shape in the distance. It was his lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. First, she looked to see if he was safe and sound, and then she saw he still had his new mittens. But one was particularly larger than the other, and that is the end of the mitten. All right, my friends, thank you so much for joining me today for story time in your classroom. I'll be back next month with some books all about Valentine's Day, I think. Let's warm our hands up to sing goodbye friends today. With friends, we sign with two little fingers that hug like this, that's friends. We'll sing it on the count of three. One, two, three. Goodbye friends, goodbye friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye, friends. All right, friends, I'll see you next month. Bye-bye.